Our next guest, before he comes to the mic to speak to you, has brought with him a video message. And I would uh, very much appreciate if you concentrate on the video. And after the video, he will share his thoughts with us. Could I have the video, please? Is a mosquito. Each year, malaria borne by mosquitoes kills 300,000 Nigerians, equivalent to the population of a city. How do we combat this killer insect? The fifth effect. Here in the eighth most populous country in the world, half Muslim, half Christian, faith leaders are working together to fight the mosquito. The solution should be simple. Long-lasting insecticide-treated bed nets, spraying their household and other simple precautions. But many people here still don't understand the dangers of malaria and don't take any precautions at all. For lack of knowledge, they die. So, while the mosquito spreads malaria, how can we spread the word? Good morning and may God bless you all. The essence of the faith effect is to use religious infrastructure to deliver knowledge from a trusted authority to influence people to adopt healthier behaviors. It works because it delivers the one thing that all the money in the world cannot buy, trust. Our members listen to us. They believe us. The level of confidence and trust that our members have in us, they don't have it even in their doctors. They don't have it in their political leaders. They trust us. They believe that faith leaders are divine. Let me do this. How many of you have a mosquito net in your house? That's a good number. And that is the only way to go. The Nigerian Interfaith Action Association, or NIFA, brings the faith effect to life. This NGO trains Nigerian faith leaders, imams, preachers, and others how to teach their congregations about malaria prevention and treatment. Father, open our minds that we may learn. In these sessions, faith leaders get medical information about malaria, instructions on how to use mosquito nets, and training on how to teach and preach within their houses of worship about this deadly disease. You, the faith leaders, have great influence. Alhamdulillah, people listen to you. Nigerians are highly religious. Attending mosque or church is often the highlight of the week. So it makes sense to reach Nigerians through their religious leader, the person 85% say they trust the most. Here is Nifa at work. First, there is an educational component. Ensure that you let them know that they must sleep under this net. Now listen children, I am a reverend. I have come to you to let you know that we need to keep away. We work with the imams to make sure that mosquito does not affect you. Students, yes. you know the story of Noah and his people in the Quran? Yes. No, but this mosquito is just like that. Let us take the warning. Let us not be like people of Noah. Did you get me? Yes. NIFA staff and faith leaders also work closely with healthcare workers in Nigeria. Make sure you sleep under the net every day. Every day. While the Nigerian National Malaria Control Program distributes mosquito nets, NIFA trains faith leaders how to use and care for them so they can instruct their leaders. It is easy for people to collect the nets and dump them somewhere without utilizing them. And, and it is the business of the faith leaders to encourage them to use it. This is a cascade training model. NIFA directly trains two to three hundred faith leaders in each state where they operate. Each leader in turn trains 20 to 50 more leaders. This amounts to over 6,000 faith leaders per state. In Nigeria's 36 states, that will yield over 200,000 trained leaders. We have one enemy. These leaders spread the word to at least 50 congregants. This malaria is our great enemies. We should try to fight it. 
Both Christian and Muslim, they are fighting against it. In this way, NIFA has spread powerful messages about malaria control to over two million people in its first three states, with many more to come. And it's working. In the state of Kaduna, use of bed nets rose by more than 60 percentage points after faith leaders brought the NIFA message to their congregants showing that these life-saving messages are reaching people and changing behaviors. <laughs> NIFA would be impossible without the active involvement of faith leaders at the very highest levels, including the spiritual leader of the Muslims, the Sultan of Sokoto, and the head of the Christian association, Pastor Ayo Oritse Jafo. There are religious leaders in this country that are connected with the people. And if they connect with religious leaders, believe me, they can achieve much, much, much more than they can ever imagine. We believe we're following our religious injunctions for us to be our brother's keepers, for us to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If we could come together instead of having such conflicts, let's harness this strength together and uh, develop our people, our communities, and of course, our country. In mosques, in churches, in homes, and under the protection of nets over thousands of beds, the faith effect is at work, saving lives, one sermon at a time. That is very inspiring. You only have one enemy, not the enemy we thought we have. We have a mosquito as an enemy, so not a religion. Fantastic. Let me introduce to you Bishop Sunday Unu Owa. He's founder and president of Vision Africa. Vision of Africa focuses on bringing networks of faith communities to share God's love and empowering the grassroots groups which are helping to build Nigeria's capacity to solve social issues from inside out. As a former pastor and chairman of youth for Abia State Government, he is director of the Nigerian Interfaith Action Association, the largest Christian Muslim interreligious collaboration to end malaria in Nigeria. He's appointed a special assistant on privatization in the presidential cabinet of the former president of Nigeria, Oba Samuel. He's consecrated as bishop in the Nigerian Methodist Church. I ask you for a warm round of applause for Bishop Sunday Unoa. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Muna, your wife, and members of this great one family for bringing us together here as one family under God. If we are not a family, we will not be here together. And I bring to all of us the greetings from His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, the Cardinal on Naeko, and the President of Cannes. I know I have five minutes, but Africans tell stories. And because we are in one family, I will tell a story of what happened to a family. A young man got married. The first night of their honeymoon, they went to a beautiful hotel, and I wouldn't mention the name of the hotel. Right in the middle of the night, the wife cried out, a newly married wife. And the man woke up to realize that a rat came in the night to bite the legs of the wife. The man was discouraged that his newly married wife was subjected to the romance of the rat and decided to fight a battle against Mr. Rat. And so the following night, the rat came back for that romance attitude. 
the man decided he would no longer wait for the destruction of Mr. Rat and went out the following day to buy the rat trap and brought in the rat trap and set up the rat trap. And so when Mr. Rat decided to come back after the day's work to continue with his romantic attitude, he realized that there was a rat trap in the room. The rat ran away and went to Mr. Chicken and said, listen, we all belong to this family. There is a problem in this house. And Mr. Chicken asked Mr. Rat, what is the problem? Mr. Rat said, Mr. Chicken, inside this our house, this our family, there is a rat trap. I need help. Mr. Chicken said, what business do I have with rat trap? I am chicken. It doesn't affect me. <laughs> and so Mr. Rat decided to go to superior court of Mr. Goat and say, Mr. Goat, there is a rat trap inside that house. We need to address it as a family. There is a problem in this house. And Mr. Goat looked at Rat and said, you must be crazy. Something must be wrong with you. Look at me. And you are telling me about a rat trap inside the house. Please, get out of my sight. Mr. Rat decided not to keep quiet and went to Cow. And went to Mr. Cow and said, inside is our home that we all live together. There is a rat trap. I need help. The cow was so upset on Mr. Rat and said, listen, look at my size. And you are telling me about rat trap that is so small. It is not my business. And so Mr. Rat decided to run into the bush because no one could help him. Right in that night, it was snowing heavily, very cold. The snake decided to find some solace inside the house because it was cold. The snake stumbled on the trap. The trap caught the snake and caught the snake's tail. The snake stumbled and stumbled into the bed and beat the woman. The woman cried out because of a snake bite. And the man rushed the wife to the hospital before they got to the hospital. The wife died. The man cried and cried and cried and came back home. And it was very cold in the night. He woke up his children and called all the members of the family and they killed the chicken in order to talk together. And the following day, they were to plan for the funeral. They killed the goat in order to plan for the funeral. And on the funeral day, they killed the cow. One family under God. We all belong to the same family. And if somebody does not care, thinking that it doesn't concern him, it concerns all of us. And for us, in Nigeria, in the Nigerian Interfaith Action Association, we have decided to say that we all belong to one family and we must all care, irrespective of religion or language. God bless you.